What's up everybody, Scott Jansen here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about branding strategies and branding tips for your coaching, your hypnotherapy, or even your NLP business. So before you think about your logo, before you think about colors, before you think about your website, before you even think about your business cards or even what you're going to say in your social media, you wanna hold your horses and you definitely want to look at this branding strategy. It's this branding strategy alone that will help you move various parts in your business, whether it's changing a niche, adding more products, serving different types of clients without disrupting the flow and income of your business. Where most people are concentrating on logos and colors and websites and business cards, what you want to do before you even get to these things is apply this branding strategy for long-term success as a coach or a therapist and definitely how you serve your clientele. So without further ado, guys, let's dive straight into the action. All right, so here we go. So firstly, let's look at and define what people are really talking about in regards to branding. So there's a lot of experts out, there's a lot of people talk about branding. Most of the branding that they're talking about is in the context of what I'm about to show you. But what I want you to consider, guys, is before you start to think about these things, which I'm about to show you right now in the context of branding, I really want you to consider why you as a person and your name should be the brand first meaning that you should be naming your business, your company, and your products and your services under your name instead of worrying about the following. So here's what I mean firstly about the context of branding. So when people talk about branding, especially new coaches and therapists, we, come con we become convinced and obsessed with things like websites, the colors of our websites, our logos, our business cards, and we spend more time branding our services instead of worrying about the most important, which is how am I actually gonna get clients and how should I position myself as a brand itself? So let me show you what I mean. So as I said, when people think about branding, they're thinking about their logo. Far too long of a time is spent thinking about what color should my logo be? What shape should it be? What should it represent? Even to the extent of paying people on Fiverr or buying other services, to build this elaborate logo with certain colors that provoke different moods and different attributes per color. These are the last things you need to be thinking about, guys. So when most people talk about branding, they're thinking about colors, they're thinking about logos. They're also thinking about spending their time branding their website. You'll see for a lot of you guys, and I did this myself, I fell for this as well, is I would create an image or something from my Facebook page or some sort of social media. Then I'd put my little logo and my branding at the bottom of all those images because I would hope that if that image shows up in Google with like a nice quote on it or something like that, they would see my branding, they would see my website, instantly recognize it as being me. But here's the thing, guys, if you're first starting out as a coach or a therapist, nobody knows who you are. So trying to brand logos and brand images is almost like a waste of time because people aren't going to buy you for your brand, especially when therapy and coaching. People buy results, guys. People are not going to buy your programs or your services because of your logo, because of your branding, because of your website name. They're only going to come to you for results. And I'm going to show you the extreme of this, guys, and show you why I don't worry about logos and images and colors. and I don't brand any of my products. I'm going to show you why I do this and why you should employ this strategy as well. Also, they think about their, their business cards. I cannot tell you how much money I have spent on business cards. Having the right logo, having the right image, having the right business name. Again, because I'm hoping that people are gonna recognize this awesome brand instead of what's most important, which is to recognize me as a therapist. And lastly, most importantly, people worry about colors. I mean, I've seen posts in certain groups where coaches and therapists are saying, I've spent the last two weeks, three weeks, one month trying to find the right color for my logo. What do you guys suggest I should use for a color? Now, if you're spending longer than five minutes to come up with your company or your business name, five minutes longer to create a logo, five minutes further than that just to get the color, you're spending far too long. And I'm gonna show you the easy way to get out of this because we can fall into this trap, guys, and become really consumed with things that do not matter. As a therapist or a coach, when you first start, the only thing you should be worrying about is getting your first client. And that client is not gonna accept your services because of the color of your website, the color of your logo, the shape of your logo, what your business card looks like. 
they're not going to look at this stuff and they're not going to buy your services because of these things so you shouldn't be putting an ounce of effort into these things until later until you have proven your business and your company to be a success and be profitable then you can worry about branding later i mean i've had this company that i have right now for well over six maybe even seven years and i still don't brand any of my stuff because it's not necessary so guys don't fall for this trap so now that we know we don't have to worry about a logo don't have to worry about colors what do we have to start to worry about well branding comes in terms of what i call you becoming the brand and i'm going to show you why you as the therapist and the coach and your name should be the only brand you worry about so what do i mean by this we'll check this out guys so here's the branding strategy most are going to do outside of the logo and the colors we already talked about that part here's what they do they label themselves or brand themselves as like an anxiety expert, or you might be a weight loss expert. You might be overcome your fear of flying expert. You might be the breakthrough expert, whatever you call yourself. So the typical therapist or a coach is going to brand their service and their business based on the type of niche they're going for. And look, I get it. When it comes to SEO or someone finding you on Google, having that niche word in your website is going to be pretty applicable. But here's the thing a lot of people don't realize. There's something like 1.2 million new websites being added to Google every single year. So trying to hope that someone's going to find your website, no matter how good the branding is, how good the SEO is, based on this keyword, when every other therapist or a coach is going for this keyword as well, is going to be pretty difficult. So I wouldn't even worry about having this name in your niche, uh, in your niche uh, URL or your actual expertise. So like I said, most people have anxiety expert, fear expert, whatever it is. And this becomes their business name and also the url.com so it might be www.anxietyexpert.com.au www.weightlossexpert.com whatever it is so their branding their branding strategy is based on their niche okay now while this seems okay what are the issues that arise well, one very big issue arises and it's going to cause a lot of havoc and chaos in your business if you find out that the niche you've branded your entire business or your company on is not profitable. So let me show you what happens with this. So from here, that same therapist or a coach starts their YouTube channel all around anxiety. They have their business name there. They have it all branded for anxiety, the anxietyexpert.com. They brand all their videos. It's all the same color. Their banners, the same color, but they do the same for their Facebook page, maybe even their Facebook group their podcast, their Twitter account, everything's related to anxiety expert or anxietyexpert.com, the name, the logo, everything's branded the same because we're hoping that there's some uniformity between the colors and the logos that people start recognizing you and your logo. So from here, once everything's branded, they go on about creating a product or several products. So as an example, I've just made this up, probably not the best program name, but anxiety buster program. So this therapist or a coach goes out and creates this elaborate program, four to six week program, helping people overcome anxiety. They create funnels for it that are full of branding. They have all their colors. It goes from their website. Everything's branded. Everything's color coordinated, but they also write like the cure anxiety book. So again, they're branding their whole service around this anxiety niche. Everything's branded. Everything's color coordinated. Everything's put together. Now here comes the issue. If you go to the extent of branding and naming everything under this anxiety thing, under this niche expertise, and you find out the following, which is the niche isn't profitable, what happens? Well, all that time and effort of worrying about colors and branding and all of this other stuff we just talked about, your logo, the shape of the logo, all of this stuff becomes a non sequitur. It means that if it's not profitable, it's not profitable. It means that if you put all your time and effort into creating this elaborate, branding strategy around keeping everything uniform you find out the niche isn't profitable what do you do well you have to start again so again the therapist or a coach realizes that no one's buying my program no one's buying my book i'm not making any money i need to change my niche which is a good business strategy but what happens if everything is branded for this specific niche it means that you have to start from the top and work yourself down again now you turn the anxiety expert and you turn it into the whole confidence expert now you have to redesign your whole youtube channel your business name you have to buy a new business name a new url a new facebook page and now this program that's the anxiety buster you can't change or iterate that program because it's all around anxiety and it's called 
the Anxiety Buster program. And now because you figured out that after creating all this stuff, your niche isn't profitable, now you have to go create this other program that suits the niche. You write another book that suits that niche. Then you realize the niche isn't profitable again. And then you keep having to go to the top and working yourself and working your way down. So my point here, guys, is until you work out if your company or your business is going to be profitable, you do not want to brand or name your business around your niche until you're 100% sure. Until you are convinced that this is the niche and the product and the business that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. Yes, then you want to go ahead and you want to start thinking about your brand name. You want to buy the URLs. You want to trademark things. But if you're doing that right at the beginning before you've proven anything to be profitable, you're going to run into this issue right here. So what's the alternative? How do you get away from, you know, instead of creating a brand and a product around your niche, how do you get around this? How can you create a branding strategy that allows you to change your niche if it's proven not to be profitable or you just want to change it all together because you're getting bored of that niche without having to recreate everything, buying new business names, buying new URLs, changing everything, creating new programs that didn't turn out to be sellable. How do you get around this without having to change the entirety of your company and everything in between? Well, guys, this is my branding strategy. So this is my branding strategy, guys, that I use for my company right now. And it serves so well because it allows my business and my company to remain very, very flexible. That if I want to expand or change my niche, I don't have to change anything else in my company. How do I manage to do this and why do I recommend you want to do this for yourself? Well, here's the thing, guys. My company is called scottjansen.com.au. So as you guys know, my name is Scott Jansen. My URL.com is scottjansen.com.au. So there's nothing to do with a niche. There is nothing to do with branding or logos or anything like this. Why is this the case? Well, let me show you what this looks like. So I've started my company, scottjansen.com.au. I've proven it to be profitable and I still haven't changed or branded anything because I do think it's not necessary right at the moment anyway. So from here, I have a YouTube channel that's under my name, scottjansen.com.au. And I also have a Facebook page that is under Scott Jansen being my name again. So this, what this does is allows me to remain really, really flexible with the next part. And the next part is what are my services and what am I selling? How does my company make money? Well, I have two programs. One is called the 100K Coaching Program. And my premium program is the Therapy Maximizer Program. Okay, they have sort of niched words in it, but they are all under the banner of my company name. So let's say, for example, I created these two products, which is about helping therapists and coaches grow their businesses online. So let's say I've created these two products and I find out, wow, they're really not selling. No one's buying these things. I need to change my niche. It just means that I can just change the programs. I don't have to change my company or my business name. I don't have to change my URL. I don't have to change my YouTube channel or my Facebook page or even any of the content. I just need to change the program. Maybe I find out that those niches aren't profitable and then I think, well, what does a market really need? Where are some pain that I can help? And let's say, for example, this is not going to happen. But let's say, for example, I you know, find in the market and I really enjoy this thing that people are looking for how to create an online website. And that's just off the top of my head. It means that I can create these products under my name. And it could be like the 100K website program or the website maximizer program. OK, and they're just off the top of my head again. But again, guys, what you're noticing, I don't have to change my company name. I don't have to change my URL. I can just change the program and it's not going to cause any havoc in my business because under your name, guys, you can create as many uh, products as you like. You can change your niche as many times as you like without disrupting the main part and without having to worry about, OK, I put logos and everything. I put branding on everything and now I have to go and change it all again because now I'm changing my programs and my niche. I don't avoid, I have to avoid that stuff. I don't have to worry about that stuff. Even to the extent now when I'm creating images and things like this or branding my courses, I still don't follow really any of the traditional stuff with logos and colors and things like that. My brand, if you look down the right here, guys, is just my name, scottjansen.com.au. That is literally my logo. Okay, that's, if you see down the bottom here on the right hand side, that's my logo. It took one minute to do and I did it on PowerPoint because that's the brand. I want people to know me. There's one thing I realize about this industry, guys, for being basically my whole entire life, 
especially selling therapy and coaching services, is people buy you. People are always going to buy from people more so than people buying a brand or a service. Now, when you're a multi-million or multi-billion or trillion dollar company like Apple or Google, sure, you definitely want to have a brand because the brand gets recognized. Okay, but right at the start, guys, as you guys are right now, and even well into, you know, making six and multiple six figures, I recommend even for all of my students in my programs that you brand and name your company or your business under your name. It's a lot easier to type in your name than some abstract niche type URL or .com.au brand into Google. I'd rather people just find your name because people are going to find about you. You're a therapist, you're a coach, you're going to be interacting with your clients. They may as well know your name and interact with you. So like I said before, I got a little bit off track. If I want to change my 100K coaching program or therapy maximizer program because they're not selling, I don't have to change everything else. I can just create new products and I can create multiple endless products under my name, scottjansen.com.au. Okay, so like I said, guys, any new product I want to create, I just put it under my company name and I just become scottjansen.com.au who has the 100K coaching program, the therapy maximizer program, the advanced seven figure coaching program, the how to become a rich coach. This is a book I'm just writing now. That'll become under the brand of my name, scottjansen.com.au. I don't have to worry about disrupting my entire company if I find out that my niche is not profitable. So guys, let me just recap as we get to the end of this. I highly recommend that you employ this branding strategy where you have your name as your brand and the products that you create underneath can become, become multiple until you find out if the niche is going to be profitable. Do not go to the extent of naming your business or your company under your niche just yet. Don't worry about logos and colors. Just literally have your name. And until you find out which niche is going to be profitable as you launch products and you work out what's selling and what's not, you don't have to disrupt your entire company and buy a whole new company name, a whole new URL and do everything all over again because the products and the services and also the niche name that you've chosen hasn't proven to be profitable. So guys, that's it. That is my branding strategy. Probably pretty boring. People probably expecting some you know, flashy logo and some secret marketing tool or anything like this. But I look at this as a logical step, guys. Until you found out that your niche is 100% profitable and has a big enough population for you to work with that niche for the rest of your career or your business, brand your company, your business, and everything you do under your name. And that way you can create multiple products without disrupting any part of your company if you find out those products and those services do not sell. So guys, that's all from me for today. Hope this was helpful. I know a lot of people have been asking me about this question and I also noticed a lot of people trip up on this. So hopefully this makes it really crystal clear. That's all from me for today, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.